and welcome to round six of the Bosra MSA GT3 Championship coming to uh, the second most famous Belgian track of Zolda. 10 turns, 2.4 miles long and my name is Jason Dilworth and I'm joined by Simon Underhill for commentary. He's going to take you through qualifying. Over to you Simon. Hi Jason, hi everybody. Uh, really interesting qualifying this round. Barry Bard taking the top spot, um, not the usual Chris Parks. But really close, as you can see, within two seconds. And we have Beckham, Ben Hackerson on in second place with Seagate. Um, Chris, privateer in third. Paul Walmsley, another privateer in fourth, driving Mercedes. And then we have the two acorn printing uh, cars of Jason Dilworth and Tony Bard. Neil Bamber in seventh with Seagate, 129.6. Dion Phillips in, in his white livered um, Audi in eighth. Phil Gregory for Golden Solutions in ninth. Ryan Walker in tenth for 56. Going to the back of the grid, see Ian Robson uh, heading up the back of the grid in 16th motorsport auctions. Martin Woodhouse uh, is McLaren 17th, Taylor Lane 18th, John Beresford 19th motorsport auctions, posting a 131.1. Paul Martin and his Mercedes 131.4, Chris Butterhill uh, 56 BMW 131.5. Down to the bottom we see Dan Bailey, Alan McCain not posting the time um, for most auctions this week. Ian Thorne, Acorn Printing, 27th. Marion Bradshaw in 28th and 56th. And with the, bringing up that is Dave White. So uh, there's some social details. Go and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And here we go. Without further ado, we're at the start of the race. Lots of smoke as people get away. And ultimately, Barry makes a good start there by the looks of it down into turn one really slippery first turn at this track wasn't it son it was really really slippery just keep it on the back of the grid oh. you see there marion brandon yeah having some um marion bradshaw sorry having some problems i think with his, uh, with his setup yeah, that was interesting straight on there's a turn there but uh i know it's uh they carried on so that's good uh, so round these first few turns down the straight down to the first of the chicanes but we're going back on board back to Rolf just yeah a bit of bit of um, coming together on the first corner here um, Rolf again really unlucky with his races so far for Bosra um, as you see in a minute you'll just see keep an eye on I think it's uh, John Beresford in both sport auctions car on left hand side as he comes into turn two he just cuts oh. across and collects Jan which then unfortunately oh, oh, rolls that's... and drives into it again. And they also, that the um, Golden Solutions also got collected as well. That's uh, really unlucky for Rolf. Like you say, he's not had any luck yet. But um, yeah, those first corner incidents, they can happen. Uh, on board with Chris then here, seems to be going through a fair few yeah. places there. It's just the angle of this incident again, uh, Jason, as you can see. Just keep an eye on uh, yes. uh, Rolf. Uh, Rolf just gets collected. And Johnson Beveridge as well, I think it is. Yeah, that's a, a a bit of a a bit of a crazy move to have made, unfortunately. But there we go. We'll focus on the positives. One ball with Chris. Paul Martin oh. and just spinning. Yeah. Yeah, he's facing Paul the wrong Martin way. Spinning and faders. Managed to collect Chris on his way to try and sort himself out, but uh, Chris appears to have carried on with not too much damage. So that's good. Just watching Tony here. And yourself, Jason, following Tony Bard into the last uh, set of ends. As, um, Tony just following Paul Walmsley through in his Mercedes, and it looks like Tony's just got an accelerator a little bit too quickly, managing to spin it round and uh, head the right way without yeah. collecting anybody, which is always good. He'd made a really good start. He'd started behind me, but got the jump on me, so that was a real shame for the end of his first lap. On board with uh, Craig, anyway. I yeah. uh, got it right, Craig, so there we go. Um, Following Ben Hackerson here, these three super close, and Paul is massively close behind this uh, this BMW of Craig Parks as well. That rear end of that Mercedes is a really nice looking car. Yeah, it really is. Really, really good looking car. Great livery. Uh, now that Seagate have changed that livery as well. And is this yourself, uh, Jason. <laughs> yeah, me getting it wrong. I was really pleased with myself spotting that gap while I was facing the wrong way and. Uh, only losing two places there, and uh, a certain and Simon Underhill just to... behind me. Yeah, <laughs> just catch you up here. And, Let's uh... get this out of the way, shall we? Yeah. This is, Viewers, I think, the this incident of the great. race. I think this was. Yeah. 
This Simon is the year Underhill, year doing an Underhill. Underhill manoeuvre, yes. <laughs> and that was only a tiny little touch. What, it's this one that's the problem. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> oh, I do apologise, I haven't apologised. It's alright. It makes for good viewing, so we get to see this from another angle from Phil here. Yeah, that was just... I just come across this to try and take the curve. Unfortunately, it collects you um, in doing so. Um, Phil just sticking behind me to see one of my brake lights is out. Um, and then, unfortunately, on this last corner here, got a bit of a wiggle on the tank slapper, couldn't quite control it, hit the barrier. Uh, and I think that was uh, my races in. I had to go into the pits and get do some repairs. Fortunately, unbeknown to me, look at this camera angle off the barrier. Oh, across. fortunately, apologise to the top of the out though. Well, that was an interesting end of that lap for you. Uh, I've managed to just about drag my car back to the pits. But there we go. We'll continue. Neil Bamber here chasing down Dion Phillips, and they are super close here. Is this down towards the hairpin? I believe it is. And Neil's going to have to go around the outside here if he wants to make this work. Oh no, it's down to the first chicane, and he has made it work because he was Great on the inside. Move. Great, yeah, fantastic Great move. move. That, it's really tough manoeuvre to get right as well. Oh, here we go. Uh, Ryan, so Ryan, Ryan Walker, in his car just got a bit uh, sideways. Lucky it's not to be collected by uh, Mike Van Delden, and then we have Sam and Jackson just. Uh, looking at the opportunity to, to pass right as well. He's done a really good job of uh, going sideways and keeping it ultimately facing in the right direction, so that's good. Simon, though, has got the run out of turn three, I believe it's called, and then down into this chicane, same move as Neil's just done. I'm surprised to see so many. Oh, no, he gets it wrong. Yeah, just drops it on the curb, really, because the, the Mercedes is really hard to, uh, to break, I think of people having problems breaking the Mercedes. You've uh, done everything car, right there. Yeah. yeah, just ah, a bit of a shame. We have a pink suited Ben Hackerson. Nice. He's just following uh, Barry Barr. Going down the start finish straight here. Um, just trying to look for an opportunity to pass Barry. And then all of a sudden, if you look, Barry oh. disappears. Ben yeah. Hackerson, I'm sure, will be on tender hooks here thinking when he's, where he's going to reappear. Barry having problems with his PC um, connection and, and his internet, unfortunately. Yeah, well, the, the problem, if for those of you who don't do a lot of sim racing, we call those the equivalent of mechanical failures, so Barry having a bit of a mechanical there, unfortunately. Uh, right, so that's Matty Van Delden making moves on Phil Gregory, I think. I think he managed to make that place up, being followed by a recovering Tony after his first, uh, first lap spin. Now we're on board of Allen, chasing down Taylor Lane in that lovely liveried yep. car. It's very sideways, but I think he's held on to it. Ah, great job. That's, that's what, the third slide we've seen caught well so far this race. So everyone getting a bit sideways, but having fun with it at the same time. He's lost a couple of positions, though. Yeah, just following um, John Beresford now with... Um, I'm not sure who that is behind him, but Jonathan just getting it slightly wrong on that, that last chicane again. I think he's changed like say, car, a really he? difficult yeah. circuit really tough and very slippery in these conditions it was hotter than some of the practice sessions this lap 10 he's just decided we'll uh, put it in the pits for a moment get those fast repairs on board again with Tony watching Phil go straight on now Phil was having a bit of problems with his brake pedal so this might have been the first time that that happened in this race because up until there he seemed to be braking pretty well but that's yeah. given Tony back another place yeah, you can see he's struggling there. Yeah, just struggling to get the grip around that board, first corner. On board, Alan McCain. Just decides last minute to dive into the pits, I think, to take on some fuel. Maybe add a, a bit of a change of pit, pit yeah, he likes, strategy at that point. He does like to pit early in the race, does Alan, and uh, it looked to me like he might have just outbraked himself into the chicane a bit, and rather than try and force it round, he's decided to take the pit entry, which is pretty clever. Matty having a, a bit of an issue there. He yep. had been chasing yeah. down Neil Bamber again for the second race in a row, but he's lost a couple of places due to that. Oh, unlike Matty Van Delden, no, he's really clean usually. And, uh, yeah, yeah good shame. racer. And he's been very consistent as well, which is very useful. Martin Brandon overtaking a recovering uh, Paul Martin there. He obviously had an issue into that first chicane. 
Yeah, Paul Martin, I say it's um, a bit further on, I think. Paul Martin just doing an underhill manoeuvre here on the Ooh. inside of uh, Marion Brand Brandon into, the, uh, into that corner. Bit of a dive bomb. Martin Brandon, but uh, yep, yeah. um, that Bowden Solutions car has got a little bit of a scrape down the right hand side now. Stop teaching people your moves, Simon. <laughs> I'm bored with brake marks now. <laughs> yeah. um, looks like he's uh, having another good race. Quite a bit away from um, Ben Hackerson, but you know, in some clean air, getting some good clean laps in. Yep, running that uh, birdie paint while he still can as a privateer. No doubt next season he'll be in one of the team cars. On board with Dion, who's gone sideways a little bit through the first half of the chicane, but manages to keep it together and keep chasing down Mr. Woodhouse in the motorsport auctions car. Oh no, it's a privateer car, isn't it? Yeah, just not. The McLaren spits out feral flame out of them exhaust on overrun. Yeah, he's uh, just given that place off, I think, uh, knowing that Dion was a bit quicker. Craig coming in for his pit stop. At the end of his 20th lap. Yeah, um, I think that'll allow Paul and Neil just to come through um, yep. just while he's taking his fuel. That little shake out though, I know that Craig does a good bit of fuel saving to make sure his pits, uh, pit stops are nice and short. Oh, Mr. Brandon getting it very wrong. Oh. Martin Brandon again in a Mercedes like I say a very difficult car uh, around the circuit heavy car doesn't brake very well you only got to hit the kerb and you're off yeah there's three well four I think major braking zones around this lap so not really suited to a car that struggles to slow down Van Delden get, getting a couple of wheels onto the dirt there it's yeah, ultimate Ryan Walker just coming out the pit it's, I think after just taking his um, pit stop Yep, really good current positioning though for that 56 car up in ninth at that point. Now we see Craig coming round after his pit stop with, uh, it looks like Paul and Paul Neil. Paul and Neil in the pits. In the pits, yep. yeah. So he'll regain his second position. There they both are. He comes out. And it looks like Ben had just been in the pits as well, but it's just exited four seconds in front. And we've got uh, 23rd Hill position, yep. Chris Butterill, following uh, Martin Brandon, who just had that issue that we saw earlier on. Chucks it down the inside. Pretty interesting move. I <laughs> don't see many uh, moves yeah. into turn two, do you? Nope, but uh, Chris getting the manoeuvre on, on Martin. Um, but sure, so clean, clean uh, move, and I think... I think he has a problem on this um, or this corner or a couple of corners time where he just drops it onto the grass as you'll see in a minute comes over the hill gets a little bit wide off his racing line um, gets the wheels oh on the dear. grass yeah. flex it goes through the kitty litter uh, but <laughs> unfortunately he'll have to take a, a time penalty for this which allows then Martin Brandon to catch up yeah better to take that time penalty though for uh, cutting the course rather than putting it in a wall though I'm sure he'll be pretty happy with how that ended up. Obviously better to not have well, the issue at all. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's I'm Ian Thorne there. in the Acorn car. There was no space at all between those two cars, was there? That was super tight. Paul defending like well. Like luminous green or yellow, whatever colour it is, of the wheels of Paul's car. Looks really nice. Yeah, they look like they glow in the dark, don't they? On board with yourself. Yep, and massive. Talk us through, Jason. Just trying to recover at this point. Um, obviously, after the pit stop earlier, I think this might actually be after my second pit stop. Um, just trying to recover some more places. Ian Robson there, being super respectful with the fact that I was probably being a bit forceful, trying to make those manoeuvres happen as quickly as possible. Anyway, on board with Dion, chasing down Phil Gregory, who's had a lot of camera time in this highlights roundup because he's had a a very good race but now we're back to him struggling on the brakes you see him lock up a left rear there momentarily I think it's yep. sliding on the way out but so running in ninth and Dion in tenth and yep. uh, oh, Dion having a bit of a slide allowing Phil just to um, get that bit of space between them and uh, carry on yeah these these hot temperatures on this track just didn't seem to let anyone get into a rhythm um, my car actually felt really good round here um, in these hot conditions but uh, 
Seems like a lot of people having a lot of trouble on this. Phil with his brake issues again, going completely straight on at the hairpin. Again, happy to collect it without collecting a wall, so I'm sure he's happy with that. Yeah, always good. And we're on board with towing now, following the mobile skip of um, <laughs> Daniel Bailey. Daniel just... No, he's not uh, sweating. Not, he's, yeah, he's, uh, to be fair, Daniel's having his own race there. He's sticking to his line. Didn't get in towing his way too much. Um, you know, you've got to give it to the guys at the back. You know, they are having their own race. Yeah. And, uh, and towing, oh. Just collected there by Marion Bradshaw, please. Yeah, I saw on the forum at uh, Bozra.uk that Tony had a, a bit of a... A negative moment about that, but there we go. I think this might this might be the last lap then, because uh, oh no, we 33. Yeah, this no, is uh, not Peter. the last lap. I don't think. I'm not sure of his first name. Sorry, Mr. Bedford. Very new to the championship. I think this was his first round. Um, it was being chased down by that lovely-looking Acorn car. Again, making a um, manoeuvre into 10th position now, Jace. Like yeah. 33, so collected some ten. some additions back from the, the incident. <laughs> yeah, if if someone had said top 10 after that incident, I'd have probably taken it and wasn't expecting that. So, but we've got some really close racing here. Paul, although he looks to be a lap down at this point, doesn't he? Yeah, and he ah, oh, he's got Alan. right in Alan, the way. Alan doing a switch back going on the inside. Unfortunately, just um, Alan and Paul collecting each other. Paul maybe should. Should have moved out of the way, I think, because he was a back market at that point. But, yeah, yeah there you go. On board with Dion Phillips now, just chasing Ryan Walker in a 56 car. Ryan had a really strong race this round, uh, currently in sixth position, really good for 56 as well. And Dion obviously chasing down with Phil and yourself just behind, having a really close battle as well. So, this is one of the uh, one of the latter <laughs> laps of the race. Yeah, Dion trying to go around the outside, but it's difficult, especially with this much. Oh, and this little grip, but he's got a good run out and he's coming alongside that 56 car, trying to outbreak Ryan down Fantastic into the... Fantastic manoeuvre, if you can make it stick. He's made it stick and it's brilliant. Does he get the exit right? He does indeed. That's a great move. Um, leaving each other loads of room. Ryan does a great job trying his hardest to defend, but ultimately knowing that uh, a seventh position is also a really good result for him here. And last lap here, as we see Ben Ackerson take the checkered flag. Really good. Well done, Ben. Um, Craig Parks just behind him in second place. Um, and if you look further back yourself, Phil having a, a race for position to the line, which yeah. I believe Phil got. He most certainly did. He did a great job struggling with those brakes. And uh, it must have only been a tenth in it or so. But great job by Ben, led from uh, as soon as... Barry got uh, no, once Barry had had his issue he, he led from then on I'm pretty sure and then uh, as you can see Craig was just a second behind and then a big gap back to Paul Wormsley and uh, Neil Bamba having a great result in fourth and you can see some of the rest of the results there and there's the bottom half of those results with an unfortunate Barry Bard 34 laps down after his connection issue I know he was absolutely gutted and uh, that's had a bit of an effect on the driver standings. You can see Daniel Twerk is still dropping, having not taken part in the last couple of rounds. And uh, plenty of other changes. Uh, Craig Parks making up five positions with that race uh, as he makes his way up to where he should be in the driver standings. Ian Robson also having a great race there, moving up six positions. So uh, lots of movement still going on in these early parts of this Bosra GT3 Championship. Yeah, onto the team standings and Seagate have moved up to top spot with 214, just pushing Acorn Printing off at 210, so four, four points in it, still a lot to play for, and Synology bringing up the back at 83. Huge amounts of rounds to go, I'm pretty sure there's still 11 races left, so that's lots to go yet in this team standings. Yeah, some real interesting circuits to come um, and I hope you guys who are watching will continue to watch and uh, see the Championship 3 with us. Absolutely, the next Championship round is at Nürburgring Grand Prix, that's round 7 and uh, we will release that video as soon as we can after the round has happened. So make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you uh, want to see these more. So all that's left to remain to say is... Uh, Thank you to our sponsors and see you next week. Thanks a lot.